So in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to set up a Bastion server, and then we configured that server to utilize a script, which then authenticates the user with their multi-factor authentication code, and then prompts the user to select the server that they wish to connect to. But I didn't really go into details on how these scripts worked, and that's because I thought these scripts kind of deserve their own video. So today we'll be doing exactly that. I'll show you how to set up and configure terminal user interfaces, and how can you set up something similar to that script yourself. All right, let's get started. So to set up terminal user interfaces, there is two tools that can do that, and you can choose one of them. One of them is called Dialog, and the other one is called Whiptail. And they're basically mostly the same. Dialog is a bit more advanced, and I think it's a bit more modern. The main difference is that Whiptail comes pretty much installed on most distros, and Dialog needs to be installed manually. But for me, it's not really a deal breaker because you don't really need to install on the client side, you only need to install on the server side. So if the server is prompting the user with a dialog um, menu or the dialog user interface, then the client doesn't need the dialog tool to be installed in order to use that menu. So to get started with either of these tools, I really recommend for you to check the man page. So you can run man, for example, dialog, and then this will explain to you exactly how this command works and what are all the different parameters that you can give to it. Dialog is the utility that displays the terminal user interfaces and then it has all these different dialog boxes that are already built in. For example, it has a list, it has a calendar, it has a message box, input box, and it has menus. And uh, to see how any of these basically work, you can search for it. So I can search for, um, let's say, input menu. In here, it will explain exactly what an input menu is and how it works. And sometimes they even give you some examples on how to set it up. So I will go ahead and show you the basics of this utility. So I can run dialog and then I need to choose what kind of dialog I want to show. So I want to show a message box and then we need to give this message box a description. So I'll just type in hello world. And then this is important. You're always going to need to give it the size of the box. So I can give it 10 by 20. So 10 is the height, 20 is the width. And if I run this command, then it will present me with a terminal user interface with the message hello world. But as you can see, the dimensions are not quite correct. So we can go ahead and change that. So I can change the height instead of 10, I can put in half, so I'll put in five. And then now it's a bit more correct. So usually what I do, I don't bother that much with the dimensions. And instead of putting the exact dimensions, I just usually put in zero, zero. And what this does, it will tell the dialog utility to automatically measure the terminal size and then uh, set the dimensions accordingly. And for the most part, this works pretty well. So if I put in zero, zero here, we will see that it scales quite nicely. And then if I can go ahead and add more messages, let's say if I put in hello world a few more times, you will see that this scales accordingly. But if I just choose the dimensions myself, then it won't scale. But at least you can still see all the message by scrolling through the description. There's many different things you can do with this. For example, uh, I can add a title. So I can say tac tac title. And then I will just type in demo. Then if I run this, now we have a title named demo. So let's try something different. What if we want to prompt the user to make a choice? How do we do that? We can use the yes no dialog option so i can run dialog tac tac yes no and then i can give it a description please select yes or no and then as always you need to give it a size so i'm just going to put in zero zero so to auto scale it and if i run this it will prompt me to select either yes or no but if i select one of these you will see that nothing happens how do we get the output of that command basically the way this works once you make a selection if you select yes, then it will run with the exit code zero. If you select no, then the exit code will be one. So we can actually see that if I run echo the exit code, then you will see the exit code is one. But if I run this again with the choice yes, then the exit code will be zero. Now you can utilize this in a bash script however you want. I can show you one simple way of doing that. Basically, I will run this command and I will use the and and to tell the bash shell that if this command runs successfully, then you need to run another command. And for this example, I will run another dialog command with the message box that says the answer was yes. Then I need to give it the size as always. But if the 
exit code was other than zero, if it was one, which happens if you select no, then I want to run the dialog command with a message box that says the answer was no. Give it the size again, and then I'll run this command and select no, then it'll tell me the answer was no. And if I run it again, I select yes, then it'll tell me the answer was yes. So this is one of the simple ways of utilizing the exit code. There is many, many different ways of doing that. I just like this way because it's very nice, simple and clear. Now, what if you want more information from the user? What if you want the user to type in something? Then we can utilize the input box. And I can give this input box a description. We can say, please enter your password. And then we need to give the size as always. If I run this, then it will prompt me with a field where I can put in the password and I can say hello world. But you will see that if I run this, then nothing happens. Where does that hello world go? So this is where it gets a bit more confusing. How do we get the value outside the dialog command? So to do that, we will need to store the value inside a variable. We will need to run the command inside that variable. Let me show you how that works. So we will need to put this whole thing inside a variable. So let's just name this a var. And I'll say var is equal to this entire command. But if I run this, you will see that nothing happens. The reason is what's happening right now, that this entire command output is being put into this variable. So the user will not be able to see what's happening uh, on the screen. So to fix that, we will need to use this syntax. Now I know this looks ugly, it looks confusing, but let me explain to you how that works. Basically, we open a new file descriptor and then we put standard out into standard error. And then we put standard error onto this new file descriptor. And once we are done, then we close this new file descriptor. So essentially what this syntax does, it will take the output of this command and then it, it will put it to the terminal and it will put it into the variable as well. So if I run this, you will see now it actually works. And if I put in hello world and I try to echo out the variable var, you will see that the variable var includes the message hello world. Wonderful. So that's how we get an output from a dialog command to both the terminal and to the variable. But obviously, if we are entering in a password, we don't want the password to be displayed on the terminal. So how do we hide that? Basically, we will need to use a different type of a dialog box. And this one will be named password box. This is basically the exact same as the input box, except when you type in, for example, one, two, three, one, two, three, it won't display in the dialog, but the variable will still contain that value. But I find this to be a bit confusing for a lot of users because they are not entirely sure if their password is being typed in correctly. So one solution to that, I can use in tac tac insecure and what this does, it will display the same prompt, but now if I type in anything, it will actually show me how many characters that I'm putting in. So this gives the feedback to the user that they are actually typing in their password. And again, if I echo the variable, it will just tell me what I typed in. And just like any other dialog box, you can go ahead and put in a title on there. So I can name this demo title. And if I run this, now we have a beautiful little title. Now, as you can see, if I run this command and I press OK, it doesn't always clear the screen correctly. So what I usually like to do is I always like to put in semicolon and clear. So now every time I run this command, it will automatically clear the screen for me. So I don't have to clear it manually. All right, now what if we want to prompt the user with multiple different choices and they have to choose one of them and then something happens when they select the choice, just like how I had in that uh, demo bastion server. So we can do that by utilizing the menu dialog. Let me show you. So I'm gonna run the dialog command. I'm gonna give this a title. I'm gonna say, please select a server. Then I will use the menu dialog and I will give it a description. I'll just type in servers and then I'll need to give it the size. So I'll size it zero, zero, zero. And then I can go ahead and type in my choices in that syntax. We need to put in the number of the choice and then the choice description. So I can type in one for the choice one and the description will be server one. Then I can type in two for the choice two. Description will be server two. And then I can go ahead and do the same thing for the third server. So I can type in three, server three. Now, if I run this, I'll get a menu box with the title, please select the server. 
and then I can select any of these and then it take me out. Now, just like any menu box, if you run this and select cancel, then the exit code will be one. And if you select okay, then the exit code will be zero. And now to get this output out of this dialog box, we're basically gonna have to do the same thing as we did to the input box and the password box. We just put the whole thing into a variable. So I'm gonna put this into a variable. And again, you're gonna need to put in this syntax at the end. Now, if I run this, and I select one of these servers, so let's say I select the second server, and then I echo out the variable, it will tell me the number choice that I made. So it won't really tell you the description of the choice, it will just tell you what choice did you select. All right, so now that you actually understand how that dialog box works, let me show you how I made that uh, Bastion server script. So I am connected here to the Bastion server, and I'm gonna switch to that jump user, and then I'm going to open that script. All right, so this is the script that I used for the demo. Let me show you how the script works. Basically, the first thing we do is we prompt the user with the password box, we get the user input, and then we store it into the pass variable. And then we get the user Google Authenticator secret key, and then we run this command to get the actual time-based authentication code, and then we compare it to the user input. So let me demonstrate how this portion of the script works. So if I run said and 1p, that means I want to echo out the first line of the Google Authenticator file. This will give me the secret code. Then if I take this secret code and put it into the OAuth tool, tac tac totp, tac b, and then I put in the secret code, then it will give me the actual time-based authentication code. So this code will change each 30 seconds. So it gets the user input and then it compares it to this code. And as you can see, if I run this command again, now the code is different. So then after it runs this portion, it will compare the user input from the past variable to the actual pin code. And then if it's not equal, then it will make another message box saying that the code is incorrect, then it will clear the screen and exit. But if the pass variable is equal to the actual pin code, then this entire line is ignored. Then the script will prompt the user with another dialog box with a list of servers. And once the user selects one of these servers, it will take the number of the server and then put it in this variable. So let's say, for example, if the server we selected is number two, it will put it into this variable. And then if that variable is equal to two, then we select the choice two, which means that we will SSH into that server and then we exit out of this. So yeah, this is basically how the Bastion script works behind the scenes. So if I run this script, it will ask me for my MFA code. And if I put in any code, if you remember, it will take this code and then compare it to the actual code. And if it's not equal, then I'll get this message. But if it's the actual code, which I'll get from the phone, then it will continue and then it will ask me what server I want to connect to. And if I choose the server, it will run this into case statement and then it will connect with that server. And if I exit, then we have already exited out of that script. So it will exit all the way back to my local client. All right. So this is exactly how that script works. Hopefully you found this video informative and you learned something new. If you want to see more of this content, then please let me know down in the comments. I'm going to peace out and I hope you have a wonderful day. See ya.